Hi guys, it's Janet with the Remarkably Created Training Center. This video is similar to the one that I did recently for the social media class that I hosted this past month in the Training Center. So I just want to cover PicMonkey with you because it is a great free website for you to use in your Stampin' Up! business. Maybe you've seen graphics out there with text overlays similar to this, or maybe you've seen great collages of product and projects. Maybe you've seen a mix of product and projects. PicMonkey again is free. It is similar to Photoshop, but I personally have found PicMonkey easier to use. PicMonkey, P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y, has lots and lots of features for free. As with any other free website, they do offer upgrades. And for me, I have found there's a few things that I use with the upgrades, but most demonstrators that I've worked with simply use the free one and have no issues or additional needs that they have found. So when you pull up the website, you have the chance to edit single photos, touch up single photos, design some custom work, or also work with a collage. Let's start first by editing a single photo. And let me find a card image from a project that I was working on. So let's just bring that one up right now. And so you'll see that come up here and this will be your work surface. Over here on the left hand side you'll have all of your tools, all of the great things that you can do to that image. The very first thing you can do is just simply auto adjust it. Now don't assume that it's always going to be just the way that you want it to. Sometimes my experience has been is that it over adjust it making it too light or too dark. But sometimes it's just right. I really like the way that this one turned out. So you can auto adjust the colors and simply then add your information. So now you can crop the photo. You can go ahead and you have this crop box and you can move it around your photo, grabbing the corners and adjusting the crop size to what you want it to be. Or you can actually type in the size that you want that image to be. Canvas color, you can change the background of the canvas. You can rotate your photo in lots of different directions. You can mirror it side to side, mirror it up and down so you can do fun things like that with it. Here under the exposure, you're going to tend to use these more if your lighting was really bad when you took your initial photo or sometimes a lot of times with people photos, photos of nature and things like that. But what you're able to do here is adjust the brightness side to side, the highlights of the photo, the shadows of the photo, the contrast and all of that. And nothing is saved until you hit the word apply. If you hit cancel, it's simply gone. Colors here, you can adjust the temperature a little bit, making them a little warmer, a little cooler. Saturation, you can actually pull the colors out and make it all black and white if you want to. This is kind of a fun little thing that you can do. And then you can say, you know, envision the colors here. What color would you make that flower? What color would you make that paper? Sometimes we get a little distracted by the color that it is. And when we take the color out and make it black and white, we can encourage some engagement by having um, asking our customers again what colors or our team members. Sharpness, you can just add a little bit of clarity to the edges and sharpness to them. And then resizing, there's great cheat sheets out there that will tell you exactly how many pixels your timeline photos should be for Facebook, photos should be for your DBWS samples and images, photos for Instagram, things like that. And you can come right in here and you can type in those specific amounts. Use percentages. Um, when you do that, the first number will be a percentage or the second number will be a percentage of the first. Um, keep proportions, it will keep it proportionate the way that it is. So just some great base, basics there for you. This one here just adds some really fun effects. You can start to get kind of little starbo starburst, that um, bokeh effect. You can start to darken the edges. You can soften the whole picture. And again, they're not softened until you hit apply. Um, if you hit cancel, you're right back out of it again. Here, you know, again, darkening those, see how it darkened the edges around it. So lots of stuff. You could get lost here playing all day long. The lipstick icon here allows you to do all kinds of touch-ups. And again, you're more likely to use these on pictures of photos, nature, your pets, things like that. But all of those wonderful Photoshop um, enhancements or touch-ups are here. So you've got that. Text. This is where you're going to be able to add text and you can either use the text that they have or if you click yours it will take you into your computer and you can use all of the wonderful fonts that you have on your computer to work with. 
And to add text, you're simply going to click on the text that you want. You're going to have a text box come up. And now you can go ahead and you can start typing away. Oops. Like that. And let me just go ahead and make this a little bit longer for right now. And now what I can do is I can come in and I can highlight that text. I can make it larger or smaller. I can make it bold. If I had multiple lines, I can change the indentation of it or the justification of it. I can fade it. So this is where you can also use just text as a watermark instead of an image. I can also now come in here and change the color of it all that I want. So you've got all of those great options. I can also just simply change the font by coming in here and clicking on the fonts as long as I've got all of this highlighted. The other thing that you're able to do is you're able to copy and paste. So I'm going to highlight that control C. I've copied it and if I'm doing multiple cards and I want them to be the same over and over again, I would bring up my text box, make sure my cursor over here is blinking, control V. So lots of great possibilities with the text. You may notice the little crowns over here. That is upgrades that you can pay for. Anything without a crown is free. So as you can see, there's very, very few upgrades. Pretty much everything in this program is free. I chose to upgrade just because I suffer from FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. And so for the few extra pennies, I'm just that kind of girl that I feel like I have to have it. So that's, that's just me. So let's go over here now. These are called overlays. And now this is where you're going to be able to come in and you're going to start to add. Maybe you want a box that you want to put your text in. Okay, so now I've got this box. And I can outline the box. I can change the color of the box. And now I can then also take my text and bring it in over top. Right now it's underneath. I'm going to right click it, send it backwards, send it forward, send it to the front. A lot of um, commands very similar to My Digital Studio. If you've been around for a while, you know about My Digital Studio. So you've got all these great images that you now get to start to play with and adding. Doodle hearts, stars, you've got all kinds of great banners. You could add, you know, hats and sunglasses. You can add smiley faces. Just all kinds of different icons that you can use. I tend to use the correction marks a lot. I use the banners a lot to add images um, and things to mine. Push buttons, you've got some washi tape, you've got all kinds of little flourishes. So again, you could just really go to town creating like crazy. The other thing that you can do is you can create your own. So maybe you've had an image designed for you as a watermark and you can just simply come in here and grab that image that you've had designed and you can add that right in here. You can change the color of your watermark and again you can fade it. So you've got all of these amazing images to play with. The other thing that you have is now you can frame your whole image. You can frame it in a shape so I can make it a circle or a square if I want it. If I want to do something like that. I can give it rounded corners so it can do something fun. I can give it edges if I want this to stand out and a lot of times you'll see that on flyers that demonstrators are creating and you can change the thickness of that. You can change here the outer edge is black, the inner edge is white. There's a real tiny fine line and I can change the thickness of those just by sliding. Here you can see that happening. I can also change the corner radius. So lots of fun things that you can be playing with here. I can give the whole thing a drop shadow museum mats, Polaroid frames, photo corners. Again, lots of amazing things that you could be doing here with it as well to make your image stand out on Pinterest, stand out on your blog, stand out on your Facebook page and things like that. This one here is texture. So if I wanted to add some light trails and had some, you know, party fun happen in there. Again, lots of different things that I could be doing to that image to the flyer that I'm creating to the handout and things like that. This little heart here, these themes are the extra themes as you can see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, this are the 11, 12 themes. They're great, again, if you're looking for seasonal things, but again, most demonstrators find that they don't need all of these extras to have. So that's your basic working with a single photo. So now let's take a minute to look at the collage feature. And this is a feature that I use a lot when creating flyers for class. 
So you're going to come over here to collage. And let's just pick out these two images for right now. You can always just start with one and add more and you'll see that here in just a second. So here where it says open photos, I can come in and I can keep picking more photos that I want. What you're going to have is you're going to have an assortment of collages. So here, ducks in a row. And these don't have to go left to right, they can go top to bottom, like that, okay? And what you're gonna find is that you need to play around a little bit. Your photos may not always fit in that box. So you may need to keep playing around with the collage, or you may need to go in and resize your photos to fit these collages. And one of the things I'm working on for right now are master photo sizes for these boxes. But the other thing that you can do with any of these is like I can drag this. So I've, I've drug it so that this one's actually a little bit longer. And now I can write in this box. By the same token, I could squish this all up if I wanted to. The other thing that I could do is I could grab this photo and you can move it in beside. You'll see where it's going to line up. I could, you know, grab it and um, line it up here, make it shorter. So you're going to see how that's going to start to work. You can kind of create your own collages just by dragging them in and adding them to different places. The other thing is fun is that once you've started to play a little bit, now you can just simply try a different collage and see what happens as you move it. And again, every collage, you can grab the image and you can shift them side to side. You can also, even though that's three boxes, again, you can go back in and grab an image. And if you look, you're going to see a blue box highlighted top to bottom here. That's where that photo is going to try to squeeze in, as opposed to here, if you'll watch on top, it's going to try to squeeze in there. If I take it up a little bit higher, it's going to try to squeeze in that whole way. So you've got a lot of different options for playing with your collages and lots of fun ones that are out there. You can see here where you start to kind of play a little bit with your squares, biggies and smalls. And don't forget, again, you can always rotate those depending on where you want them to be elegant. I love the Facebook cover one. This is the one that I use to design all of my Facebook covers. You've got some collages to get you started. But again, you can slide these side to side and move them around. Pinteresty, it's got some great look to it with some different kind of boxes. Towel border jigsaw. Jigsaw is one of those ones that you would upgrade to. If there was any reason at all to upgrade, I would say it's this jigsaw um, collage right here. So then with your collages, you can add some backgrounds. You can add your own. The one area that I use a lot, I very seldom add any texture because I don't want anything competing with my um, images that I have here. But what I can decide to do is I can adjust the spacing, having a whole lot more spacing in between and that's great to do if you want to come in here and add text and write in between your photos so you can adjust the spacing you can decide to round corners if you want you can decide to change your background as well I can also use this eyedropper to color match my background so if I'm trying to make it look more stampin up I can go ahead and use that eyedropper to color and so I can have a transparent background as well the other thing is, is that once you've got this and you want to now add text to it, so you've got your collage, leave some of the boxes open if you want to add information for classes. Because then what you'll do is you'll come in here, you'll click edit, and it will open an editor. Once you've done that, the pictures are locked. You can't unlock the pictures. But now I can add text with the text boxes in any of the open areas or right over top of my photos. So you can see that PicMonkey has so much available to you. And again, it's a free website. I love that you can't break it. And a great tip for you is that when you have altered a photo, when you save it to your computer, make sure that you give it a new name. That way your original photos also stay in your folder untouched so that you can use them in a different way in the future. So hopefully that's got you excited about using PicMonkey. Hopefully that's given you another tool for creating great marketing pieces to use on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, your blog, and in your newsletters with your customers. So thanks for stopping by the Training Center Facebook group, guys. Take care.